We are going to look at objective four of partial differentiation and that is application of partial differentiation in small changes. And we're going to spend some of the time in this lesson doing the derivation of a formula that's going to be used for generalization purposes. We have been using the formula for finding the volume of a cylinder as volume is equal to pi r squared h. Here, volume depends on both h and r which means if you keep h constant and change r, then v will change. If you keep r constant and change h, v will change. If you change both h and r, then v will also change. Let there be a small change in each of those variables such that r sub 1 is equal to r plus a small change in r and h sub 1 is equal to h plus a small change in h. That means that v sub 1 is also v plus a small change in v. And remember, v sub 1 is equal to pi r1 squared times h sub 1. If we put these changes into a formula, v plus a small change in v is equal to pi into r sub 1 squared times h sub 1 which is equal to pi into bracket. The first value here is r sub 1, which is r plus delta r. Because v depends on both r and h, these effects will have the following implications that v plus a small change in v will be equal to pi times r sub 1 squared times h sub 1 which is equal to pi into r plus delta r this one is squared into h plus delta h we close the bracket we are going to use binomial theorem to expand that one so this gives us pi which is common to both of them then we have r plus delta r squared will give us r squared plus 2 r delta r plus delta r squared we close that bracket then we open a bracket have h plus delta h we close the bracket we close the outer bracket now our task again is going to be expand that bracket to get pi into bracket if you multiply this h by the first bracket to get r squared plus 2 r delta r plus delta r this one is squared into bracket open it with h then we have the same bracket r squared plus 2 r delta r plus delta r squared then we close the bracket and open it with delta h we close the outer bracket so we are going to have pi into bracket multiply h by each of these terms to get r squared h plus 2 r h delta r plus h delta r this one is squared then we add this one here open that bracket to get r squared delta h plus 2 r times delta r times delta h plus delta r which is squared multiplied by delta h we close that outer bracket now we distribute pi into each of them then we get pi r squared h plus 2 pi r h delta r plus pi times h times delta r squared plus pi r squared delta h plus 2 pi r delta r times delta h plus pi delta r which is squared times delta h now we have removed all brackets there's something that is interesting here remember from a previous lesson we said partial derivative of v with respect to r is equal to pi r squared and also saw that pi that the partial derivative of v 
with respect to h is equal to Now, from a previous lesson, we saw that partial derivative of v with respect to r is equal to 2 pi r h. And partial derivative of v with respect to h is equal to pi r squared. Remember a previous lesson where we looked at these two results. We're going to use them again in this derivation. So this one is equal to pi r squared remember is v so we have v plus delta v is equal to v plus 2 pi r h 2 pi r h is partial derivative of v with respect to r we're multiplying that by delta r then we add pi h times delta r squared plus pi r squared pi r squared is partial derivative of v with respect to h so we replace it partial derivative of v with respect to h we are multiplying that by delta h we have 2 pi r times delta r times delta h plus pi delta r squared times delta h that's important there's something else that we need to also note from here something that is really important that these changes are very small the change in r the change in h are very small changes so that this one is tending to to zero where we have a product of the two and that is going to be much much smaller so we're going to get that reasoning from here Now it's something that is interesting is that these changes are very small. The changes we are talking about here are very small compared to the original measured values. Such that now a case like here, so you get we having small change in R times another small change in H. When you get the product of small values, the result is going to be really really small such that 2 pi r times a small change in r times a small change in h small change in h tends to zero and where we have like this one here pi times a small change in r which is squared times a small change in h is also going to be very small and it tends to zero so we replace the last term here also with zero remember here also that we have pi times h times delta r squared is also going to be very small because the change in r is very small and when you square it it becomes much much smaller now taking into consideration these results then we can replace this part also with zero such that when we have done that we get v plus delta v is equal to v plus a small that's partial derivative of v with respect to r times delta r plus partial derivative of v with respect to h times delta h because we have replaced this with zero this with zero and that with zero remember there's a v on the left hand side of the equation and a v on the right hand side of the equation so these two can cancel out legally you know can cancel out so we can cancel this one and cancel that one so that we remain with our new result that a small change in v is equal to partial derivative of v with respect to r times 
a small change in R plus partial derivative of V with respect to H times a small change in, in H. That is what our objective for this lesson was. So that we look at this as if there is a small change in R and a small change in H, then that effect will spill down to how V changes. This is the result for that objective. And it can be generalized in such a way that if you have a function f, let's say, of x, y, and z, such that f is affected by x, by y, and by z, then we can use this to generalize what will happen here. So a small change in f will be equal to partial derivative of f with respect to x times a small change in x. We add partial derivative of f with respect to y times a small change in y. We add partial derivative of f with respect to z times a small change in z. That is what we can generalize. And if there is a function of other variables, maybe five or six variables, then you can use this approach to make that generalization. This is what we had for objective four. And in our other lessons, we're going to now use this information to work out examples. Because we have uh, completed our objective today, we want to stop there and ask you to find time to look at other lessons that we're going to prepare. If you have not subscribed to our channel, find time and subscribe. And you can like it, you can share it, and work with us in this journey to make this mathematics much, much more lively. Thank you very much for getting time to attend to this lesson. What we have done today is looked at partial differentiation application in small changes and we have actually derived a general formula which can be used if you have more other variables that it depends on. So find time to go through this again and if you find any problems you can still contact us and we can chat the way forward. If you have not subscribed to our channel find time, subscribe, watch these videos, comment, and let us know which areas that we need to do a bit of an improvement. We are still working on more lessons. Keep tuned in, keep checking every other time when you post a new clip, then you're going to be very comfortable to assist you. You're going to make other lessons on the same. We're going to use this in working out other problems in the future lessons. So find time, subscribe to our channel, comment, watch these videos and let us know your feedback so that we can improve continually. See you that time in the next lesson. Thank you for finding time to watch this one.